Four o'clock on your Monday afternoon, and we start with an arrest warrant released today. And it says the dentist accused of murdering his wife looked up how to make poison. The warrant laying out some pretty clear evidence against James Craig, including new details about an affair. This case comes out of Aurora. A judge this morning issued no bond for Craig. Investigators say he poisoned his wife, the mother of their six children. Nine News reporter Kelly Ranke was in the courthouse today for his first appearance. Kelly. Hey there guys. Police arrested James Craig early on Sunday, shortly after doctors took his 43 year old wife Angela off life support. He appeared in court in an orange jumpsuit and waved to a couple he seemed to know in the very front row. Craig didn't say any words as prosecutors prepared to file formal charges later this week. Last Wednesday, police say Angela went to University Hospital in Aurora. She complained of a severe headache and dizziness. That same day, Craig's business partner at the dental practice told the nurse he thought Angela had been poisoned. According to an arrest warrant, a few days earlier, an employee saw potassium cyanide in a package addressed to Craig. Police say the box was shipped to his dentist office in Aurora. Court documents say the employee searched potassium cyanide when she learned Angela was sick and realized she had symptoms similar to a poisoning. An investigation began immediately. Police say they looked into Craig's online search history. The warrant says he looked up how to make poison and top five undetectable poisons that show no signs of foul play. Those are very strong pieces of evidence if, if in fact they're true and the prosecution can prove it. Um, you don't have to have an eyewitness watch someone slip poison into somebody else's drink or food. If in fact the autopsy report shows that the individual died because of poisoning. Now, according to court records, employees said Craig wanted a divorce. Police say he had a romantic relationship with another woman and it appears he even flew her to Denver while his wife was dying in the hospital, guys. That arrest warrant is expansive. Uh, there is quite a bit of information that we don't always see it at this time. Yeah, again, they arrested him early on Sunday morning, released this arrest warrant uh, to the public today. It is over 50 pages, so a lot of evidence that investigators compiled in just a couple of days. Yeah, that's unusual to see that happen so quickly. Yes, very unusual, but again, a lot of uh, people were coming to police telling them, hey, I got a suspicion here, and that's where this investigation all started. Okay, thank you, Kelly. Two teenagers died last night. They were sledding at Copper Mountain, and they were on the resort's half pipe. It was four and a half hours after the mountain had closed. The Summit County Sheriff's Office says the two teens were riding on a sled down the half pipe when they launched off a large snowbank and fell hard onto a patch of ice. The two boys, one 17, the other 18 years old, were high school students from Illinois in Colorado on spring break. The sheriff says they died at the base of the mountain. It's just an incredibly tragic incident, uh, something that we never want anybody to have to experience. I can't say enough about um, how our hearts go out to the families involved. There is sledding allowed at Copper Mountain, but only in two areas. The half pipe isn't one of them. The names of those two teenagers who died have not yet been released. Their school, Prairie Central High School in Central Illinois, did have grief counselors today at school to try to help students there. CPW reports a man in Chafee County had a really close encounter with a mountain lion Saturday night. The first reported mountain lion attack on a human in more than a year. The man and his wife were sitting in an in-ground hot tub at a rental home west of Nathrop, which is when he felt something grab his head. The couple began screaming and splashing water at the animal before grabbing a flashlight and shining it in the animal's direction which they realized was a mountain lion. The commotion caused the mountain lion to retreat. The man only suffered minor injuries and scratches. The CPW says that he did the right thing by creating noise and shining a light. Officers are still looking for that mountain lion. So how's spring treating you? We're in about 40 minutes into springtime. <laughs> The vernal equinox came. Do you feel that coming by? The first day of spring is upon us, at least the partial day. Here in Denver, it all happened at 324 this afternoon. Of course, the term equinox kind of comes from the idea of equal day, equal night. And on this spring equinox, the world is seeing roughly equal amounts of those two. If you look outside live right now near the Loveland Ski Area around the Eisenhower Tunnel, that doesn't look too springy. No. Unless you live near Loveland Ski Area, and you know, yeah, this is pretty much every day up here. <laughs> it's mud uh, season, right? But, Isn't that what Kathy calls it? Yeah, just not 
too springy. Back here in Denver, it, it was a warm, kind of a mild day, but we had a lot of clouds, um, quite a bit of clouds. When the sun came out here and there, we will take it when we get it. With spring here, the sun will set later and later, so hopefully maybe we'll see a little sunshine at the sunset time, Kathy. It looks uh -huh. like it's Happy out. vernal equinox, everybody. It's Woo. been great so far. I've really Hasn't enjoyed it? springtime. I 40 know. 40 minutes have been unbelievable. I know, it's best, a 40 minute 40 celebration. <laughs> mm -hmm, it is, we're so ready to say goodbye to winter, hello to spring. Even with the abundant cloud cover coming in ahead of a California storm, we still managed mid 50s in downtown Denver. And this storm is gonna bring another round of heavy rain and snow to California when they're ready to turn that faucet off. Now, because the winds aloft are out of the west, the mountains of Colorado are going to see heavy snow. But when that moisture crosses over the continental divide, hard to get that rain or snow on the ground here. So we have a 20% chance of a sprinkle this evening as that moisture is just kind of moving its way in across the state up over the elevated terrain. As Tom was saying, it's snowing and the snow is going to turn heavy. But for lower elevations, how about 63 in Pueblo, Lamar, 54 in Denver, almost 60 in Greeley and 56 in Fort Collins. So not bad for the first sort of day of spring. Tomorrow's the first full day. Winds out of the south will keep us mild tonight. These are all advisories for wind and snow coming in. Yeah, it's going to be pretty windy over southern Colorado tomorrow, and we're seeing light snow showers on the I-70 corridor. Winter weather and travel advisories could mean heavy snow, though, above 9,000 feet later tonight. We have some passing clouds, maybe a brief sprinkle. We get you a sunny day tomorrow as we're in between storms. A little bit unsettled this week, but a mild week nonetheless. We're in the mid 50s now with cloudy skies will slide into the mid 40s by 8 o'clock. Coming up in Maine weather, welcome to spring. Mild weather for the city, but heavy mountain snow. We're going to detail all of it with your extended forecast, and that's coming up. All right, thanks very much, Kathy. A musician for a popular Colorado jam band is missing. Chuck Morris from the band Lotus and his son Charlie went kayaking in Arkansas late last week. But the two never returned and search and rescue efforts do continue. But our Jalisa Irizarry spoke with Morris's bandmate, who is, of course, desperate for answers. Even the happiest memories hurt. Through the joy, everyone knows at some point the music will fade. It's just a... It's a tough situation to deal with. Jesse Miller just wrapped a month of touring with his more than 20 year old band Lotus. The group started in 99, gained a ton of recognition in the Colorado jam band scene and opened the Red Rocks concert season in 2021 with percussionist Chuck Morris by their side. Uh, you know, everywhere we would go, there would be fans and, and friends that had hung out with Chuck and had had great stories with him. But this is a story no one wants to tell. Last Thursday, the Benton County Sheriff's Office says Chuck and his son Charlie went kayaking on Beaver Lake in northwest Arkansas. They never returned. Their kayaks, as well as a jacket belonging to one of them, was found, but the two remain missing. And I don't know if anyone really knows how to prepare for something like this. Yeah, getting this news is just yeah, gut wrenching. Sonar boats are still searching for the two, but authorities say the situation is leaning towards a recovery effort rather than a rescue. It's just really tough. I mean, Chuck and Charlie at the same time. I, I knew Charlie his entire life too, so. The music may only be a memory, but many that love Chuck find peace through his percussion. From everyone who's reached out to offer support and, you know, say how much they love interacting with Chuck and seeing Chuck perform over the years. That's definitely been comforting. Miller last saw Chuck about three weeks ago. They are supposed to start another leg of their tour in just a few weeks with a stop in Colorado. The band has not decided what they plan to do, but Miller believes Chuck would like to see the music go on. Kim and Tom. Well, you think of working together with someone so closely for so long and to suddenly lose them and, and that relationship also with Charlie, the, the young boy. Yeah, I mean, you know, Miller said it perfectly. He's known Charlie his entire yeah. life. So to know that they have not been found yet. It's just absolutely heart wrenching. And yeah, they've been a band since 99. And I believe he says Chuck has been a part of that band since 2000. So a very long time and a very long relationship. And the uncertainty right now. It's just that that waiting, I think, makes it equally difficult too. Yeah. Thanks to Lisa.
A lot of talk about Casa Bonita this year, and if you've ever thought about working there tomorrow, it might be a good chance for you because they're going to be hosting a job fair tomorrow. They're trying to fill about 550 openings to get the Pink Palace up and running. Some of those openings are for immediate jobs. Other people would be starting closer to the opening day in May. The fair will run from noon to 4 tomorrow. It's at 2500 Larimer Street in Denver. Again, Casa Bonita scheduled for a reopening in May. Okay. So if you want to be a diver, show up. No, don't show up. In no, your don't suit. show up. In your suit. Not, not such a great idea. But, but maybe, you know, those that do, you want to have a list of your accomplishments as a diver ready. I think they really they, they really have a chance to hit the mark here. It is so famous. Yeah. And now they're going to add really quality food to it and the fame that will come with it opening again. They have a chance to hit it big. And, you know, those people, you know, looking for work, that'd be a great place to maybe start out. We'll see. Well, you know, one thing, you won't be waiting for customers. <laughs> I mean, sometimes, seriously, you know, you think about it. Sometimes you work at a restaurant and you're thinking, oh, it's a slow. I need some tips. Right. But then you think of like everything that's ever opened here from Krispy Kreme to Whataburger or whatever they come here. There's a line for three weeks. I know there will be. Casa Bonita will probably have at least that. I'd give it longer than that, maybe <laughs> six, eight weeks. We'll yeah. see. We'll see. Well, spring football hasn't felt this exciting in years up in Boulder, but Coach Prime has brought a lot of juice to the struggling program. It was a season to remember for Michaela Schifrin. The world's best skier reflects on a historic season and another record.